Hey everyone, what is going on? Welcome back to another video here on the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about the charge rates of a lithium polymer battery pack. What is the best charge rate range that will provide you with the best balance between being able to charge your battery quickly and a long lifespan for the cells within your battery pack? In addition to this, at the very end of the video, I'm gonna go through a quick tour of my charger. A few of you guys have asked me about the specific and the details about my charger. We're gonna go through it very quickly and you'll get to see exactly what my charger consists of. So let's get started and talk about the charge rates. When it comes to charge rates, one of the best things about lithium polymer battery packs is we get to choose the rate that we're going to charge the battery pack at, and that essentially defines how long we have to wait. And of course, what we want to do is we want to get that battery pack back and fully charged and into our vehicles as quickly as possible. This way we can run our radio control vehicle. But at the same time, we don't want to charge our batteries at a faster rate and cause damage that affects the lifespan of that battery pack. So what do we do to find the best balance? We can break up the charge rate of a lithium polymer battery pack into two different sections. And we're gonna be talking about the battery charge rates in terms of the C value in order to get that charge rate. So for example, a one C charge rate on a 5,000 milliamp hour battery is going to be five amps. A two C charge rate is going to be 10 amps and so on. When you look at these charge rates, we can break them up into two different categories. One of the categories being from one to two C and the other category being for just greater than two to five C. Now, generally speaking, there's a lot of batteries that can charge beyond the one C charge rate mark. This is essentially a baseline across all battery pack manufacturers. One C is going to be known as the most safe charge rate for your battery pack. However, some batteries can go beyond this and all the way up to a 5C charge rate. 5C is extremely quick for you if you are charging your battery pack. You're going to get that battery pack topped up in a really fast amount of time. Now you definitely need to make sure that your battery is rated to be charged at a 5C rate. If your battery is not rated to be charged that quickly or at any value above the 1C mark, then you are not able to do that. Otherwise you definitely risk some sort of injury or damage at least to your lithium polymer if it doesn't get that far. This is gonna be where you get the best amount of performance when considering how quickly you can actually charge a battery pack up. When you look at the other category of charge rates going from 1C to 2C, this is gonna be the case of your safe range of charge rates. 1C being the general rule across the board as we've mentioned and 2C being a quicker charge that can get your battery topped up and a healthy battery pack can get charged up in no more than 30 minutes. And of course this would be going from a 20% charge capacity all the way to full 100%. The next question is, is how do we know that charging your battery packs at a one to two C rate is going to be the best balance between speed of charge as well as the lifespan of a battery pack? When it comes to the lifespan of a battery pack, generally speaking, lithium polymer battery packs are going to last on average between two to five years. And of course, there's gonna be a lot of dependencies on what your battery pack, what range it's going to fall in. When it comes to the cycle count, you should get a minimum of 200 cycles from a lithium polymer battery pack all the way up to 500 cycles. Now there is a rule and essentially on when your battery pack is fully depleted in terms of its lifespan. Now here's the interesting part. When it comes to charging between 1 and 2C, based on all the battery packs that I've owned and the data that I've collected from them, I don't notice a difference from those packs that I've charged mostly at 1C versus those battery packs that I've charged mostly at 2C. What I do notice a difference is, is when I am charging packs at a much greater rate than the 2C charge rates. Now here's something very interesting about the charge rates of 1C and 
2C. I would much rather prefer to charge at a 2C rate if I really don't see an actual lifespan difference between 1 and 2C. Now the thing is here is that when you are charging your battery packs, this is only one element of the lifespan of that battery pack. A much more sophisticated part of the lifespan of that battery pack is how you are abusing the battery pack or not abusing the battery pack when you are actually using it and when you are actually storing that battery pack. These items alone can make up for more damage for that battery pack than the actual charge rate itself. This is where I've noticed a massive statistical difference in the lifespan of a battery pack. If you are not bringing your battery pack to the storage voltage, you are going to see a drop in performance, not only in capacity, but also in the internal resistance of those cells. Those are both really bad and can happen within months from each other, as opposed to charging at a faster rate such as 2C over an extended period of time. Another thing to consider is constantly running that battery pack to the point where it is getting up to a higher temperature. This is also going to cause more damage to your battery pack than simply the charge rates that you're using between that 1 and 2C mark. Even higher than the rates that we're talking about here where I'm really limiting the good side of the range to 2C, but I know that even up to 3C is probably not going to cause much damage. The reason I say it is because I don't have the statistical data to really separate 2 and 3C charge rates from one another. However, when we look at the actual heat within a battery pack, as well as the storage voltage of the battery pack, and how much you're actually depleting from that battery, as well as even leaving the battery pack at 100% charge for even a couple days, all of these elements play into some significant amounts of life lost if you are not treating your battery fairly. Really, at the end of the day, the best charge rate for you to use when you're at the field and you want to charge up your battery is a 2C rate to balance out the lifespan of that battery pack as well as being able to get that battery pack into your radio control vehicle as quick as possible. Now, if you are charging and you don't have a problem with waiting for up to an hour to an hour and a half, a 1C charge rate will do just that. You should expect your battery will be charged in less than one hour, provided that that you have a 20% capacity still remaining in that battery and you're going all the way up to of course the 100% mark. Now let's quickly tour my charger so that you can see a bunch of performance aspects of that charger and what it's all about. Here we are, this is the charger that I use for nearly everything including even a lot of content here on the channel. You can see that it's the Polaron EX1400 made by Gropner. And one of the things that we can see right away is features on the side here. You got a USB port that you can actually charge a bunch of items on, such as your cell phone. And one of the things that you can do too is also use this port here for servo test as well as this port here for motor sensor test. So if we swing around to the front side of this charger, you can see that we got a two channel charger here. Now the first channel, you can see that there's a couple leads. You got your balance port. Right on the bottom, you have a temperature port there as well. And on the other side, it's the exact same thing. You got a second channel with your leads as well as the balance port and a temperature port. Now generally speaking, I don't use the temperature port because I charge mostly lithium bottles polymer battery packs and any type of lithium battery should never increase in heat as you are charging it. So here we have a profile charge discharge. You got the cycle balance data miscellaneous user set and store functions on the front of this charger. These are the icons that you can immediately select when you're looking at the main menu page of the charger. This is what you get right away when you start up the charger. Now on the top, we got some information. It does appear to be wrong. It is not April or March the 4th, and it's not 1044 p.m. as well. So I probably have to update that and set that correctly. I put there my name. You can obviously name it whatever you want. And then right away, we can see the profile. So I'm going to go in here and click on the profile. And then you can see, so right now, battery six is the one that's selected. And it's got the battery type listed as a life voltage 2S and the capacity 2500. So that's a receiver pack in the jet. 
And of course, you go through this, you can find a whole bunch of different battery packs. This is a lithium polymer battery pack that's used as well. And it's a 3S2200, this is a 2S2200, and then you get into maybe some larger ones here, 4S4000, 6S5000, and so forth. So let's jump out of that. You got the exact same thing if you switch to channel two. I'm not gonna repeat this, but everything's identical between channel one here and channel two. So there you have it. This is Profile 2 with a 6S 5000 milliamp hour battery and it shows a charge current of 6 amps which more than likely comes from a previous test that I was doing on a 4000 milliamp hour battery pack. When it comes to the charging capabilities, this is going to be a maximum of 8S on this charger as well as up to 1400 watts which really means 700 watts per side. Now we have of course the ability to look at a few of these other icons. This is the discharge where we can actually perform a discharge of a battery pack. You get about 60 watts of discharge power per side, which is pretty decent. I don't need anything more than 60 watts for what I do. And you can see that you can actually determine how you want to stop the discharge. You can actually discharge the 3.73 volts here. As soon as it touches that, it's gonna terminate the discharge and you can set the current. And this is gonna be, of course, limited to that 60 watt value. And on the bottom right, this is the probably one of the most important icons here is the storage value. I choose values here anywhere between 3.80 to 3.85 when it comes to storing. And you could choose the normal mode and then it's going to pull the charge and discharge rates that you have set in the other functions here, your charge and discharge functions. If I change the charge, from six to 6.2 and exit and enter the storage mode, it's just pulling that value to get your charge current. When you have a powerful charger, one of the best things that you can do is get a good power supply so you can use the full potential 1400 watts. I use an 1100 watt supply, which is good enough for me. I've essentially maxed out the 1100 watts on a couple charges that I've done. Well guys, that pretty well does it for this video. As always, like the video if you do, and don't forget to hit that sub button so that I can see you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.